Hi, I'm Krista West of Avlia Folk Embroidery, and in this video, I want to show you how to make a wall hanging, how to turn your embroidery into a wall hanging. There are lots of ways that you can finish embroideries. You can finish them into cushions like these. You can finish them into table runners. You can frame them. But one of the really kind of neat historic ways to finish an embroidery is to turn it into a wall hanging that hangs off of a tapestry rod like this that can be displayed either on a vertical stand. This is actually a purse stand. That's a brass purse stand. Or you can hang them on a wall. You can hang them on the back of a door. There's a lot of uses for them. And you only need three simple things to make them. They're very simple. Um, they're actually one of the most simple and inexpensive finishes for an embroidery that you can, that you can do. You need an actual embroidery, you need a piece of embroidery, or even a textile. If you find a really cool textile somewhere and you want to frame it, this is a great technique for that as well. You need a lining fabric of some kind. The lining fabric doesn't really show, but I like to coordinate it to the embroidery whenever possible. And then you need a tapestry rod. I sell two sizes in one finish. I sell, I think, a 9 inch and a 12 inch on the Avlia website. These have a, the end that comes off, one end, let me see if I can get it to come off on this one, that allows you to slide your embroidery through it. You make a casing in the top of the embroidery. I'll show you that in just a minute. And then it goes on one end, and then you can just simply hang it and display it where you like. If the sizes I have on the Blue website don't fit your embroidery, there are tons of tapestry rod options on Etsy. All different finishes, sizes, different kinds of finials, different color cords. Really, you can find almost any kind of tapestry rod you might imagine on Etsy. So let's get started. Okay, let's start by laying out our embroidery. And we've got some sort of marking tool handy, a ruler, and some scissors. The first thing we want to do is decide kind of how big we want our embroidery. And then we have to add a half an inch seam allowance to both sides and the bottom and then a one inch seam allowance at the top. That'll give you just a little bit extra for the casing. And I find that makes a real difference in how it looks when it displays. So for this one, I want my design, I'm looking at my hanging rod here, and I want my design to finish maybe even say about an inch even beyond, beyond my, from the edge of my embroidery out, I want there to be an inch of fabric showing all the way around it. So it looks kind of nice and generous. So what that means is that I'm going to now actually mark a line an inch and a half because the inch is the amount that I want it to, to be beyond, but then I need that half of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to mark that there and I'm going to continue marking that one and a half inches on all three sides like that. You can also pull a thread. If you prefer, you can pull a thread. That's totally up to you. On this sort of a thing, I've got it ironed, it's nice and even, I don't really need to pull a thread. Now, so I marked the one inch I want here plus a half an inch seam allowance. Now up here at the top, I'm going to mark the one and a half inches that I did here plus another half an inch. So that means two inches. Now when you're marking like this too, really look at the threads and just sort of make sure that you're even there. And then I'm going to strike a line across the top, okay? Now I'm going to trim that carefully like this, all four sides. And at this point, if you're a little concerned that maybe you cut it too big, maybe you don't want it to have that much space around it, all you really need to do at this point is Put your tapestry rod kind of here and visualize. And when I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, it's going to be in here. I'm like, no, this is actually going to look just right about perfect for what I want. Now you're going to take your lining fabric. You're going to set your embroidery aside for a second, set aside your tools, grab your lining fabric. Now grab it and pull it out right side up. You want it right side up. All you're going to do with this, you don't really need a pattern for this. You're just going to take your embroidery and you're going to lay it face down on your fabric. And you now this fabric I'm showing you is coming straight off the bolt. So it's ply, which means it's actually folded um, together. 
but I'm not going to cut through all layers. I'm actually only cutting through one layer here. If you had some fabric that came with, say, a kit or that you were using out of your stash, you're just going to lay it on your fabric. And I'm now going to cut the fabric basically to match the embroidery. They're going to be exactly the same, like this. Great. So that the embroidery and the fabric are right sides together, okay? This just saves you a step. You don't have to put it right sides together later on. You can just do it that way. Okay, then I'm going to take my embroidery and my fabric. I'm gonna move my extra fabric out of the way. And now I have this, and I'm gonna actually take two pins in just a minute here, and I will put two pins here, and that will mark an opening. I am now going to stitch at the sewing machine all the way around this, but I'm gonna leave that opening. So that'll be the next section that I show you. So I've marked two pins. I put a pin here and here. You can put more pins around the perimeter if you need it, but on a smaller embroidery, you don't always really need a lot of pins because the embroidery fabric and the, and the lining fabric kind of want to stick to each other. So just use pins at your discretion. I am now going to start stitching here with a half inch seam allowance all the way around. I am going to back tack. And I'm going to make sure that my lining and my embroidery fabric stay nice and lined up like that. When I get to the corners, I often hand flywheel the corners just to make sure I get a really, really crisp. I'll get in a little closer on that and show you that. There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to continue stitching the rest of it all the way around. One of the things that makes your finished piece, whether it's a pillow or a wall hanging or something really crisp and professional looking, is that you are really careful at the corners and that you go to exactly the seam allowance. And that, I mean, I've been sewing for 35 years and you still have to just use the flywheel just so that you get that really nice tight corner, really crisp. There we go. Yeah, because see when I come up to the corner, you'll see I flywheel that last like half an inch just so I can make sure I get it exactly. Now even there, I'm a little bit off, so I might go maybe one more stitch up to where I get an exact half an inch. Okay, now I'm gonna keep stitching all the way around. And that one I can spot is right at a half an inch. I'm gonna come down to my second pin right here and I'm gonna back tack. Okay. Trim my threads like that. Okay. Oops. I want to make sure you can see all that. I'm now going to carefully trim the corners. So not too much, especially if you're working with our traditional ground cloth. Do not trim too closely here because the traditional ground cloth really wants to fray. And so not too much. You just want to reduce a little bit of the bulk. It helps the embroidery lie a little flatter when you have it all finished into the wall hanging. So I'm just trimming each one of those corners. Now I'm going to, next step is I'm going to take it to the ironing board. Now I'm at the ironing board and I'm getting ready to turn my piece inside out. Now I've left this little bit here open and I'm going to now take the piece and very gently turn it inside out. I'm, I always get my thumb up into those corners first and gently push those. I don't worry about like really getting them finessed yet. I'm going to do that in a minute with a chopstick. But I'm just going to very gently pull my embroidery out like this. Boop. And if you have trouble turning them, leave a little bit wider opening. Um, the wider the opening, the easier they are to turn, but then you've got like a little bit wider opening that you have to mess with. So it's kind of a, you have to kind of make a decision there. That's a tough one. Now I'm just sort of finger, I'm just getting these corners positioned with my fingers like this. Now I'm going to lay it flat. I've got threads here. I'll trim threads in a minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here with my chopstick and very gently, very, very gently, I'm going to just turn. I'm actually kind of twisting the chopstick and using it to very gently turn out those corners. Now, traditional ground cloth is a little bit bulky, so you're not going to get them all the way turned out. Like they're not going to be like totally razor sharp, but you're going to get them as crisp as you can. And that's going to go like that. Okay, great. 
and you're going to do that each corner. And you noticed that when I went from one corner to the other, I used that chopstick inside to kind of push out the seam. That's another little trick. Then I realized I'm missing one corner. So I'm going to come in and sometimes I work it from the front. I work it from the back. I kind of just work it wherever it's going to want to go. Oh, that one turned out great. Okay. Now I'm going to trim any loose threads that I have going on here of which I have a couple and I have a little loose thread from the fabric. Okay. I'm going to trim those. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to very carefully press all around this. I usually start over here in the, and the, along the seam and I leave the opening for last because the opening can be a little bit fussy. So I'm going to do one side. I always like have the side that I'm working on totally facing me like this. It just makes it much easier. I typically press from the front so that I can see if the lining is popping out. If the lining's rolling to the front, I want to know that. Oh, there's that side. I'm going to leave that for a minute. I'm going to go down here and I can see already that like I'm a little bit off on this here. So I'm going to kind of pull and fuss with it a little bit and I'm going to press to get that kind of where I want it to be. Okay. Now I've, now I'm at that last corner and typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by worrying first about the embroidery fabric. Let's get that put into position first because that typically tends to be the hardest. And then if you need to roll to the back at all, now is the time to do that. And what you can sometimes do is you can place the fabric on the ironing board, kind of gently scoot it, like maybe just like a sixteenth of an inch, and then press it, and that will help your fabric kind of sit to the back where you want it. Now, at this point, you can either, you can top stitch all the way around your embroidery. If you're going to do that, though, do not top stitch up here, okay? Or you can blind stitch this close. I'm going to actually blind stitch this one closed. But here's how you do the casing. And it's really, really simple. You just take your seam ripper, just a regular old seam ripper. And I'm going to go in a little closer for this so that you can see what I'm doing. Well, if I can figure out how to do it. There we go. And you are going to come up here at the corner. And you are simply just going to rip out a few stitches. Do this carefully and gently. You're going to rip out about mm, half an inch, three-eighths of an inch of stitches. Get your seam ripper in there and just feel for a stitch. Now, what I like to do is I like to know and see that stitch before I rip it because I don't want to inadvertently pull on the embroidery fabric. Okay, there we go. Now I can see it right there. There's that stitch of thread. Oh, I think I can. There we go. And I'm going to start with one. The first one's always the toughest one. And then from there, you can just gently pull out thread by thread. And what this does is it just makes a really simple little casing. You can stitch it closed if you want. Um, I typically don't because I think it can make the embroidery lay kind of funny on the tapestry rod. But you just basically open it to within one stitch like that on one side. You do that on the other side too. I'm going to do that on both sides. And there we go. Sometimes it's easier to start in the middle of where you're kind of going and look for those stitches so that you're not near a corner stitch or a back tack stitch or anything like that. Just grab that first stitch you can. Of the, and when I say which stitch, I mean the ones that you stitch down with the sewing machine. And just for those of you too watching who don't have a sewing machine, you can do this entire process by hand. It would just take you, you know, an hour or so to sew this by hand. You do not have to have a sewing machine to do it this way. And then you just basically keep opening it up like that so you have a little opening it's really just kind of a very very simple way to do this it's kind of a path of least resistance way to do this now here I think I'm going to need one more stitch on either side any little loose threads like that I just kind of tuck into the casing I've got this like this okay great now I'm going to grab my tapestry rod open up one end of it like this and I'm going to now just slide it through that casing we just made, just gently on this side. Now, when you get to the other side, here's the deal, that you've got that little bit of seam allowance turned in. So what I always do is I put my finger in there first to feel for the tapestry rod to make sure it doesn't get tucked up under that seam allowance. There you go. There's your cute little wall hanging, and you are good to go. Very simple, very clean finish. 
And again, you can vary the size of rod that you use, the finish, the cord, all of it. And here is our finished wall hanging. As you can see, it's a really charming finish for an embroidery, a great way to go. And if you find these brass purse hangers, they're pretty great because they work on a variety, they are adjustable with the set screw. So you can use them for taller or shorter wall hangings. You can change out your embroideries for the season. It's just another way that you can display your beautiful handwork. I'm Krista West. Uh, with Avlia Folk Embroidery, and thank you so much for joining me for this how-to video.